today we discuss the electromagnetic boundary conditions so we have already discussed the electrostatic boundary conditions in our live session and uh, we have seen that the boundary conditions for the tangential components of the field is as obtained by the integral form of the maxwell square equations del cross e is equal to minus do b by do t and uh, del cross h is equal to j plus do d by do t so the corresponding integral forms are closed integral e dot dl is equal to minus d phi by dt and uh, closed integral h dot dl is equal to i plus surface integral dou d by dou t dot ts by the end it is curl equations in the integral form so but the line integral on it for number of our boundary illa number of closed loop over here so and uh, half of this loop should come on the medium one the other half on the medium two And we have seen that A in one cap is the outward normal from medium one, and A in two cap is the outward normal from medium two. So we have already discussed this, and uh, applying the integral form of the Maxwell square equations, we will get the corresponding boundary conditions as e1 tangential is equal to e2 tangential and a n2 cross h1 minus h2 is equal to j s j s is the surface current density so we know that the maxwell's curl equations are different for static and Dynamic cases, static case in our end is 0, e dou d by dou t term 0, del cross e is equal to 0, del cross h is j alone. But we get the same set of boundary conditions for static and dynamic case. So we have seen that uh, the thickness of the closed loop here tends to 0, t tends to 0. So the area of this is also tends to zero so suppose it is having a length l the area is l in the t which is also tends to zero so when we apply the uh, equations for the dynamic case uh, we will get uh, closed integral e dot dl is equal to minus dou by dou t of b dot ds minus dou b by dou t dou t dot ds so e surface integral namla e closed loop in agat integrate but the area of this is tends to zero and the surface integral exists only if the surface ha is having some area but the area illa to the part is zero so if we have already evaluated that e1 tangential into length l minus e2 tangential into length so we got e1 tangential minus e2 tangential equal to zero so similarly we got h1 tangential minus h2 tangential is equal to j s n static case where jsn is the surface current density on the boundary or on the interface normal to the condo c so the condo c is normal to the surface current density on jsn so it is static field in true on a dynamic number num karya e closed integral h dot dl i i very much on h1 t minus h2 t and no are in the jsn get another 
but in the dynamic case there is another term but as the area of this condor C tends to zero then uh, this integral also vanishes so we have the same set of boundary conditions for the static and dynamic case and this equation can be written in vector form as a n2 cross h1 minus h2 so these are vectors is equal to j s vector so this is the vector form of this equation we have already discussed this and this equation is also true for both the static and dynamic cases where a n2 is the outward normal from medium to at the interface so we can see that the tangential component of e field is continuous at the boundary or at continuous at the interface but the tangential component of H field is discontinuous at the interface where the free surface current exists. The surface current is zero on angle H1 T minus H2 T is also zero. The tangential component of uh, H field is also continuous. But if there is a surface current at the interface then the tangential component of H field is discontinuous and the amount of discontinuity is equal to the surface current density on the interface which is normal to the condor C. So similarly we have to get the boundary conditions for normal components. So, in order to get the boundary conditions for the normal components, we have to use the integral form of the divergence equations. So, the divergent Maxwell equations are given by del dot D is equal to rho and del dot B is equal to zero. So, their corresponding integral forms are closed integral d dot ds is equal to q and closed integral b dot ds is equal to 0. With the surface integrals on it, we will apply closed loop. So, we need a closed surface. For example, a Gaussian pillbox. So, we have a boundary like this. Then, uh, we have to construct a Closed to surface, a pill box over here. Half of the pill box in the medium one and the other half in the medium two. So here also the thickness tends to zero. So this is the medium one and this one is medium two. And uh, this is a n two outward normal from medium two and this one is a n one. So here the thickness tends to zero and therefore the area of the four surface, uh, side surfaces tends to zero. So only the upper and lower surfaces having non-zero area and closed integral d dot ds is uh, integral d dot ds over the upper surface plus integral d dot ds over the lower surface. So, we have already evaluated this in our live session and uh, we have seen that uh, this will give a n 2 dot d 1 minus d 2 is given by rho s where rho s is the surface charge density. So, this is the surface charge density of the interface. Applying the integral form of the equation del dot b equal to 0, closed integral b dot d is equal to 0 on this pill box, we get b1 normal is equal to b2 normal or b1 normal minus b2 normal equal to 0. Therefore, b1 normal is equal to b2 normal. 
അപ്പൊ നമുക്ക് ഓൾറെഡി അറിയാം ഈ ഡൈവേർജൻസ് ഇക്വേഷൻസ് എന്ന് പറഞ്ഞാൽ സ്റ്റാറ്റിക് കേസിലും അതുപോലെ തന്നെ ഡൈനമിക് കേസിലും സെയിം തന്നെയാണ് സോ വി ക്യാൻ സേ ദാറ്റ് ദി കറസ്പോണ്ടിങ് ബൗണ്ടറി കണ്ടീഷൻസ് ആർ ഓൾസോ സെയിം സോ കേൾക്വേഷൻസ് രണ്ടിലും ഡിഫറെന്റ് ആണെങ്കിലും ദി ബൗണ്ടറി കണ്ടീഷൻസ് ആർ സെയിം സോ ദി ബൗണ്ടറി കണ്ടീഷൻസ് ആർ സെയിം ഫോർ ഓൾ ദി ബൗണ്ടറി കണ്ടീഷൻസ് ആർ സെയിം ഫോർ ബോത്ത് സ്റ്റാറ്റിക് ആൻഡ് ഡൈനമിക് കേസസ് equation can be also written as d1 normal minus d2 normal is equal to rho s so the normal component of b field is continuous across the interface and the normal component of d field is discontinuous at the interface and the amount of discontinuity is given by this equation so we have four boundary conditions e1 tangential equal to p2 tangential and a in 2 cross h1 minus h2 is equal to js so js is having uh, all the uh, left side and right side is having a unit ambient per meter js is the surface uh, current density and we have defined it as the current per unit length perpendicular to the flow of current so it is having a unit ambient per meter so uh, the next boundary condition is that uh, a in 2 dot d1 minus d2 is equal to rho s where rho s is the surface charge density and the fourth boundary condition is that b1 normal is equal to d2 normal so we have uh, numbered this equation this is equation number 1 this one is 2 and uh, this one is equation number 3 and this one is equation number 4 so we can summarize this uh, the boundary conditions as the tangential component of an electric field is continuous across the interface and second one is that the tangential component of h field is discontinuous across an interface where the surface current exists and the amount of discontinuity is being determined by the equation number 2 so the amount of this continuity is determined by the equation a in 2 cross h1 minus h2 is equal to js and similarly uh, the third boundary condition can be stated as the normal component of a d field is discontinuous across an interface where a surface charge exists and the amount of discontinuity is determined by the equation number 3 a in 2 dot d1 minus d2 is equal to rho s so and uh, the fourth one is that the normal component of b field is continuous across the interface so these are the four boundary conditions so we have already learned that the two divergence equations can be derived from the two curl equations and the equation of continuity ab ad independent alla nu nammal padichittundayirunnu appo nammal ee rendu boundary conditions nammal curl equations nanu derive cheyathu ee rendu boundary conditions nammal divergence equation nanu derive cheyathu so the boundary conditions which are derived from the divergence equations cannot be independent from the boundary conditions derived from the curl equations so in the time varying case the boundary condition for the tangential component of e is equivalent to the boundary condition for normal component of b so similarly the boundary condition for uh, the tangential component of h is equivalent to the boundary condition for the normal component of d so 1 um 4 equivalent aanu 2 um 3 um equivalent aanu so 1 um 4 um namaku simultaneously specify cheyanda avashyam illa so the simultaneous specification of 1 and 4 is not needed then the simultaneous specification of 2 and 3 is also not needed so this 2 1 and 4 are not independent and 2 and 3 are not independent okay